welcome to the Haunted Ride. Hello everyone and welcome to the Haunted Ride. I'm your host Melissa Cummins and thank you for joining me today. So I hope you have your snacks and your tea or your drinks or whatever it is that you like to enjoy. Um, I'm incredibly sick so I'm gonna try and not sound like uh, a frog is in my mouth or somehow crawled up in my nose and is making an us there and breathing. Um, but I feel like I already sound like that. So, you know, it's just, it's just a fantastic thing. My mother had a friend come over and she was sick apparently that week and she traveled anyway from New York to Florida. Uh, and when they, when she came off the plane, she went into urgent care because she had the beginnings of pneumonia. I I had promised to meet her over the weekend, and so I did, but I thought she just had the beginnings of pneumonia. Now, I'm not even really sure if pneumonia is, like, at what stage pneumonia is contagious, um, or if it's contagious, or if it becomes, like, a virus first, and then you can get the virus, and then if it gets, I, I don't, I don't know, like, I'm not that well-versed in pneumonia or bronchitis. However, I am well-versed in the fact that I am a virus-prone person. So I don't get colds, I get viruses, and I think I talked about this, uh, I want to say I talked about this, like, last week or something, and, um, I had not been sleeping well before, and I was really hoping that I didn't get sick, and then Monday, so last week Monday, I, um, I was like, oh shit, like, if I go into work, I'm gonna, I, I will have a virus, like, I feel it in me festering, like, I, I feel it, like, I just need to stay home, so I did, I felt so much better, like, I felt like I really did the right thing. And then Thursday, I felt it again. And I was like, shit. And I was like, I can't, I can't take off again. I mean, like, I can, like, I have the days, but I was just like, you know what? Let's, I, I can do it. Like, we're so close. I just need Thursday and Friday. Friday came and went and I ended up spending a shit ton of money on medicine. Um, this is the first time I bought cough medicine in like 10 years. Luckily, the cough part of my... I'm not going to call it a virus because, um, well, actually, no, I'm pretty sure I had a fever like once or twice, but it wasn't like super, super high. Um, and I just, I just dealt with it at home, but I had a really, really bad cough that is taken care of and completely gone. And then I had horrible body aches. That was Saturday. That's gone. And now today I actually feel worse than I did yesterday, but I know that like, it's one of those things where you feel worse and then you get better. So it's been great. Um, so if I sound like a frog, at least... I'm still alive, and I can talk without coughing up a lung, which is delightful. So I hope that you guys are having a much better time than I am. I hope that you guys had a great weekend. Um, this episode is really special to me because this episode is actually my first ever interview that I did on this podcast, and I did it with Phil Sams from Ghost of the Night. That episode was a bitch to do. We, he sat with me for 40 minutes. As we try to get through all the technical difficulties to begin the episode. And then me editing the episode, which is broken into into this week's episode and next week's episode. I realized just how much it was breaking up. It was really bad. Like, I know, like, my internet at some point had an issue on its own, which is part of the technical difficulties. That we had a huge storm, like, rolling in. There was, like, a whole bunch of stuff going on, so... I understand that's part of it, but then there was also, I I think, based on the research I did, the program that I used, I feel like there was a bit of a bandwidth issue, um, because I have a free account, and so it just broke up a lot. Uh, going through it, I had to re-record a whole bunch. The whole the whole thing was just a nightmare. It was a it was a huge nightmare, and he stuck with me. For we were supposed to start the interview at three o'clock, we started it at three forty, and we ended it around like 6 30 yeah because i think he had to go somewhere at seven so like that's how long we spent between technical difficulties and the actual interview and the fact that he was so incredibly patient that he didn't try to like honestly like i thought he was gonna be like let's reschedule and i wouldn't have believed him there are times where like i was getting to that point because it's just like i don't understand i've used this program before I tested it before. Now, I didn't test it on this particular day, but I tested it before. I used it before as where I was the interviewee, not the host of the interview. 
and I didn't really understand like why I was having all these issues. And he just, he just, he never gave up. He kept working on it and he, he made time for it. And what's even more amazing is so before he did this, he'd gone on, he had gone on a investigation the night before, which means that he was up, you know, quite late in the morning. So he, he didn't even have that much sleep and he stayed with me. Um, so if I didn't have a, a ton of respect and kudos from, from before this, I definitely do after. Uh, Phil has been one of the best supporters of the show. He was the first person who I ever did an interview with ever. And then listening to the show and just like uh, how we've both grown together whenever we're, we're having these interviews, which we just call conversations, because it really just feels like a conversation to like two old friends, really. And um, I just, I really appreciate him. And he's really great about having, people talk about when you have a co-host, one of the most important things is the energy between the two and that they have some sort of chemistry. And Phil is able to create chemistry with whoever he has on his show. It, that really comes and is, is shown in every single interview he does. And it's also shown in this episode. Like, there are a lot of times where I'm sitting there editing the episode and I'm still laughing my ass off at something that he said. And I just, uh, I can't thank him enough. So this episode is going to be with him. And uh, we'll start that in a second. But I did want to talk about a couple other things. I wanted to give a shout out to two different podcasts. So the first one is Snap Food, which is Situation is Normal, All Fucked Up. I had actually listened to episodes from that show before. And, um, but I, I've been going through a bunch of different podcasts and just listening to a ton of people, which, small shout out, but if you guys um, want to find some of the podcasts that I listen to, I have a list on Twitter called podcasts I listen to. <laughs> And um, they're all there. So if you guys ever need some recommendations for podcasts, please give them a, a listen. Um, and then I have another one that is podcasts I am i haven't listened to yet or something like that. There was probably like 170 podcasts on there. I think I got it down to like 140 and now I brought it back up. But every time like I find a new podcast on Twitter that sounds like something I'm interested in or someone like shouts out a podcast and it's something I'm interested in, I follow them and I put them on there. And Snuff Food was, was one of those podcasts. I added them to my podcast player, and I had actually listened to an episode by them. But I listened to episodes at work, and you know sometimes like you get distracted or someone calls or something. And I thought I had ended the episode, but I didn't. And so it ended and started autoplaying another episode, and so I never got to really figure out what episode it was that I heard or who I heard it from. And I just didn't even bother to go back. I just said, oh, you know... I actually thought it was something else. So I, all of a sudden I get this review or, or I, I get a, I'm looking at something in my emails or something and um, I get an email that I got a new review on iTunes and it's from Snap Food Podcast and what they wrote was so incredibly sweet that when I read it, I started tearing up at work. Um... And I, you know, I have two other reviews and they were incredible and so kind and so nice and so incredibly unexpected. But this just, it really touched me because it was like the first time that I had actually like gotten a review and, and had been able to find out about it so quickly because iTunes is really bad about that. They do not tell you when you get reviews. You only find out if you have something else that tells you or if you're checking it constantly. I don't check it constantly because iTunes up to this point never even told me that people listen to the show. It would just tell me I didn't have enough data. So I found out from my own like podcast analytics that people do listen to the show from iTunes, which I thought they didn't, but I didn't know. So I get this beautiful review and I just, I could not be more thankful about it. And um, that review actually... So iTunes works kind of weirdly where like, I guess the amount of reviews that you get unlock certain things. So finally, iTunes started telling me like, hey, you have data. It finally started telling me like people listen to the show. Like that, that review unlocks so many things for me, including being like such a sweet review. And I, I reached out to them on Twitter and I was just like, look, I've got to thank you. I, I, I made a tweet about it with a little screenshot. And then I, I messaged them. I was like, I've got to thank you so much because... 
This was just the sweetest thing. And they um, they reached back out to me, and it was Shannon from the podcast. And um, we had been chit-chatting, and she actually wrote an email. She wrote her story. Um, and she's so sweet because she keeps saying she's, like, fangirling over me. And I'm like, honey, like, you have no idea how much I fangirl over you. But I never write it. Because every time I've spoken to her is while I've been sick and I'm completely delirious. So so what my fangirling looks like is where I think that I'm being hilarious. <laughs> I think I'm being so funny and this person is going to see that I am like hilarious and not extremely weird. <laughs> but but my hilarity is extremely weird. And and normally I would just I would just be like upfront about like how like amazing this experience is and how like everything. But every time I've talked to her, which has been mostly over this weekend, it's been while I've I have a bunch of pills in my system for this fucking cold. And so I just I instead of being like, you know, thank you so much for this. And so I'm pretty sure I said thank you. And then I've made I've cracked jokes the whole fucking time. And she has not stopped talking to me through my weirdness and through what I think is hilariousness. And she wrote a story into the podcast, and I have to write a story in for hers. And I just, she has been the sweetest person. Like I don't, I clearly I don't know her that well, um, and or, or anything, but she's so kind and so sweet. And her podcast is so fucked up, and I love it. It is fucked up in the most glorious way. Like I listened to this one episode about a whole bunch of Russian hikers that went missing and it was a whole thing and and I just my mouth was dropped. I had a big O on my face. My eyes were bulging out of my head. I was shaking my head because I didn't understand and I'm over here like conversing about the goddamn podcast and I have no one to converse about it to because I'm in the middle of work. So I'm just like mumbling to myself about the podcast and they do an amazing job. It's um, her and Corey. They do an amazing job. So please go listen to their podcast. It's Snafood. It's S-N-A-F-U-D podcast. Um, you can find them on Twitter. And their Twitter is S-N-A-F-U-D podcast. Um, and then they also post like their episodes and stuff. And you can find them pretty much anywhere, I believe, because I found them on iTunes easily. I've, I have them on my podcast player easily, so you can find them. Um, another podcast that I have to shout out to and give some love to before we start the episode is Murd Up. Um, I also really listen to their episodes and they're, they're very sweet and very kind. Um, I have talked to them a couple times on Instagram now and they just, um, you know, I talk about all the time about how like I want this podcast to be a, a community. And then one of the things I've also noticed um, as I've been doing podcasting on social media is sometimes there's communities, but you have to like work to get in those communities. And I just don't really feel like it should be like that. And because like, we're all like in this kind of like field together and we're all learning together. Um, but sometimes like information is just kind of kept behind closed doors and people don't really want to reach out or really want to like be a part, which really sucks. Um, and y you know that that's up to you, but, um, I really appreciate it when people aren't like that. And these two podcasts, Not Food and Murd Up, they're not. So please give them a listen. Um, they're great. And I hope that you enjoy them. Uh, and also, of course, give Phil Sam's from Yes in the Night a listen. He talks a little bit about his podcast. And he even gives us a little teaser that I hope you guys enjoy. So we're going to listen to a promo. And then at the end of the promo... You guys will hear the episode, and then I will be back with you after the episode's finished. See you guys in a little bit. Hi, true crime fans. I'm Erin. And I'm Shay. We host All Crime, No Cattle, a conversational podcast which focuses on true crime stories from the Lone Star State. We strive to bring you a balanced and well-researched story about Texas cases big and small. We do the research so you don't have to. We also end every episode with a good news story, just to remind everyone that real life isn't quite as depressing as true crime can make it out to be. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can find us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. All crime, no cattle, because crime is bigger in Texas, y'all.
Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Today, I have an amazing guest. I've talked about him plenty of times on the show, and I've told you guys to go listen to his podcast, which if you haven't, shame on you. Um, but I have Phil Sams from Ghost of the Night with me today. Thank you for uh, joining me, Phil. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and talking with you again. <laughs> Even though last yes, time, I... you know, last time <laughs> we talked... I told you what was going to happen, and we just talked about it. It happened, so I'm blaming you. This might, this interview might go south real quick because I got a bone to pick. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe that accounts for all the technical difficulties earlier. But that see, like be. I've had a great week. <laughs> uh huh. Not me. No, I up upload a podcast and shit hits the fan. Uh, that's okay though. At least I don't have that third ear we talked about. But the real question, was it you or was it somebody else? That's the real I, I have done nothing bad. <laughs> okay. All right. I believe you. I trust you. I've I've been I've been good. I've been over here. Dude, look, I have I barely been sleeping sometimes. So I if I could cast anything, that would be the first thing I would. <laughs> yeah. It would be a long rest. <laughs> exactly. I know how that is. So, so tell us a little bit about your podcast. I know, but just in case anybody hasn't, you know, tell us about your podcast. Um, my podcast, I, I, I've, I wanted to start a podcast, basically. And I started one. I've had a little bit of a journey to get to where I'm at now. And mm -hmm. I started a podcast and, you know, I wanted to talk about something I knew about. So I started, you know, at one point I was in sales. So I kind of started a sales podcast. Not that I wanted to be a sales guru or anything. I just wanted to. You know, I thought it'd be cool to do a podcast. So I, I started doing it, but it was basically work. It was my job. It wasn't even my job at the time, but I had have had experience in it. But it, it was work. And I didn't, I think I did maybe 12 episodes. And I got a little bit of a response, you know, a few downloads. It wasn't nothing to write home about. And I was like, it's, this is just too much like work. And I got to dread actually sitting down and recording a podcast, coming up with <laughs> ideas. And I mean... There's an abundance of topics I could talk about, but I just dreaded doing it. So I said, you know what? Screw it. And I started, I've always had a fascination with the paranormal from childhood with all the experiences I've had. And uh, so I said, you know what? Let me, I don't, I'm not an expert by any stretch, but I can talk about it and let me do a podcast on the paranormal. So as I was thinking about it, I said, well, let me, just like your podcast, I wanted people to have a platform mm -hmm. for people to come on and kind of uh, share their stories because I wasn't confident enough in my expertise in it. So I wanted other people to come on and find out more. That way it was a learning process for me and any viewers or listeners that I had. So I started to plan and I, with my other podcast, I just jumped right into it. I pretty much just did it and went with it to where this one, I kind of took two months to kind of build up, you know, get some social media accounts rolling, try to gain a little traction and, foot, you know, get some momentum going, start talking about what I wanted to do before I even recorded a podcast. And uh, so I did that and I just started recording the podcast. And as you know, you know, it doesn't happen as fast, especially with, you know, getting people to open up and share their stories. And so I got a little frustrated and I even started beforehand trying to reach out to people to get people mm -hmm. to come on. So I, mm -hmm. I would have a kind of a backlog of interviews to kind of bleed me through because I didn't want to do every week an interview. I wanted to mix my stories in and my experiences in. So mm -hmm. I couldn't get anybody to even respond to me. So I kind of started thinking, well, let me kind of reach out to some paranormal investigators because, you know, they do it not for a living, but they, they're actively going out and trying to find evidence of the supernatural in the spirit world. And I'm sure they would love to talk about it. So I started reaching out to some local people because in the back of my mind, I was like, you know, it would actually be kind of cool because I never went on an official paranormal investigation before you know i've had experiences throughout my life and kind of done half-assed investigations or you know <laughs> or yelling at spirits leave me alone so i can sleep kind of thing <laughs> you know stop opening and closing the door but i never went on an actual investigation and naturally like everybody else that's listened to your podcast and mine i watched all the shows um mm -hmm. so i said let me reach out to paranormal investigators 
And I got one that was in the same town as I live in. And this is a ghost chasers. They responded to me and they said, why don't you come out before I just want, actually, I just reached out to get them to come on the podcast or record a podcast for with me. And I was like, but in the back of my mind, I was like, maybe I can actually kind of go with them to an investigation if they'll let me. Because, you know, most of them are a tight knit community. You know, they just don't let anybody yeah. in. Um, but maybe I can kind of weasel my way in to kind of actually go on an investigation and kind of see what it's all about and see if I can get something. Because that would be a great, it would, at least that's one podcast episode. I could just talk about what I experienced. And sure enough, within them, you know, I never even did a podcast with him they i was just talking back and forth and he said come on out we got we're going to uh ross opera house um it's a good location Mm -hmm. it's a good starter location and uh come out and just investigate with us and see what you see what you think and you know we'll kind of go from there and we'll probably come on the podcast and talk about it i was like cool i'm there so i went down there you know i'm fairly intelligent so and i've watched enough uh ghost adventures and ghost hunters to kind of bullshit my way through it Mm -hmm. So I did it and I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Um, I, you know, mm-hmm. kind of, maybe I'm just, you know, it takes a special kind of person to sit in the dark and basically talk to themselves. So I enjoyed yeah. it. And, and what really got me hooked, like I told said earlier, I've had experiences all my life, you know, and just about, mm-hmm. you know, I'm kind of think I'm the haunted person or my family's kind of the haunted because every, like I, I'm going to say without, off the top of my head, probably five of the 11 or five of the 10 places I've lived have had some sort of activity, uh, even the place that I live now. So, you know, I, I I have experience with it, but Mm -hmm. I just wanted to do it. And I never really had that. I never went out looking for paranormal or evidence of the paranormal. Mm -hmm. And after I went on that investigation, I came back the next day, you know, up all night. I think I got two hours of sleep. Came back kind of, you know, and I bought a digital recorder, which I didn't have. I did at that time, I mm-hmm. bought a video camera, but I hadn't, it hadn't uh, showed up, been delivered yet. I think I got it two or three days later. Um, so all I had was a flashlight, digital recorder, and an older digital camera, you know, from mm-hmm. you know, 2010. And my, naturally, mm-hmm. my, my cell phone. So that's what I took. That's, I went out and went with them in. Kind of, you know, naturally being around five, six people that I didn't know first time I ever met him, I was a little shy. You know, I'm a shy person, yeah. In in general, out in public, it's mm-hmm. not that I'm. Re- it's not even that I'm not really shy, but I'm kind of an observer by nature. I kind of like to observe people and kind of before I kind of interact with them to kind of see what kind of get a read on them. So as the night progressed, I, you know, I actually got involved with the uh, investigation and I was snapping photos and doing the whole thing. And I got back the next day, kind of took a little nap again, woke up and started going through um, the photos and listening to the <laughs> digital recorder. Now, let me backtrack a little bit. Throughout the night, this place is notorious for bangs and shuffling and footsteps yeah. and, and EVPs. Um, mm-hmm. And even shadow figures. I think I did episodes. My third episode was about that actual investigation. Um hmm and so we, I had a lot of personal experiences there. You know, I heard shuffling, I heard things, or I saw things out of the corner of my eye, kind of a lot of light anomalies, you know, uh, seemed like a shadow passing. But so I had personal experiences. So my adrenaline was kind of, I was really looking forward to going through the evidence and seeing if I caught anything. EVP wise, we caught a few little, you know, some of the knocks and bangs were caught by the recorder. Um, but I went where it really, got interested is when I started going through the photos. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, now this place, just to kind of set it up, it's a, it's called the Ross Opera House, which I've been there three mm-hmm. times. Matter of fact, I told you I had an investigation last night. That was actually, yeah. I went back, I went back for my third investigation there last night. Can't keep away, can you? It, it's crazy. It was crazy last night. I mean, by far, it was the, you know, this place kind of, that first night was pretty active. Second night, not really had a few. Well, the second night it was slow. And if anybody, I'm sure you've listened to the, the evil in the ghost box episode I did with a little, the Satan coming out through the ghost box. That was my second. Yeah. That was my second investigation there. That was, oh. you know, and that was, uh, but what an interesting fact, which I haven't really, I didn't, haven't done a podcast 
on that actual second investigation just for the mere fact I did the go even the ghost box because it was kind of a cool little funny you know scenario that played mm-hmm. out in that session but I haven't done the whole episode yet so that night was actually that was pretty much up to that point I was about halfway through the night it was dead nothing you know you could hear a pin drop yeah and then as soon as that happened and I think I even said this in the podcast things mm-hmm. kind of started things started picking up and things did feel a little bit more dark I guess and that's not really that place you know that's not really a dark place I've never felt you know bad things there or anything yeah but it kind of took a dark turn and that's what that podcast was about kind of how when you hear something you know like the word satan or it kind of plays with your mind so you kind of everything seems to be satan Mm -hmm. at that point you know so that's what that podcast was about but last night i and i hadn't talked about it because i wanted to go i knew i was going back here soon and Mm -hmm. kind of get do kind of a overall summary of the place but this place is notorious getting back to my i'm rambling let me get back to my no, you're story. Fine. You're um, fine. <laughs> but that first night I caught a picture when I was going through the evidence from that very first investigation. And well, let me get, I'm getting back to where I started this. Um, this place, it's a, it's a movie theater now. It's called the Opera House, but it's a movie theater. And in the back of the auditorium, there's a female restroom and a male restroom. And there has been reported a shadow figure that kind of floats from or goes from one restroom to the other. And I did do some research before I went on my very first investigation. And I, you know, YouTube, there's a video of it, um, people talking about it. So I knew that that has been reported there. So I kind of started taking pictures in that area, you know, because that's what I, I, you know, with the limited experience I had, I said, I'm going to do that. I know there's something been reported. I'm going to kind of focus there, at least spend some time doing that. So Mm -hmm. getting, getting back to my long story winding it up um when i started reviewing that evidence the photography evidence that first day you know i didn't see it at first but if you follow me on twitter you've probably seen it there is a picture and it looks like a shadow figure Mm -hmm. between between the two bathrooms and and the only reason only reason i caught it was because i saw there's like a window right behind behind those two and there's a kind of a if your arms are down at your side, there's a, you know, like a upside down V where your torso and your arm meet your armpit yeah. and go back down. I saw that, you know, white in that. And I started looking, I was like, well, wait a minute. There's a, it looks to be a shadow there. And that is what I missed it like three times. I went through that photo or passed over that photo three times. I was like, whoa. And then I kind of blew it up and looked. And I said, it looks like a shadow figure right there. You know, it could be, you know, something. It, I don't know what it is, but it looks like a shadow figure. And mm-hmm. I knew we were, they were planning on going back. So I, d- I said, I definitely have to go back because I want to try to, you know, replicate it or debunk it in some way, shape or form. So that really got my, uh, I'll, I'll wrap the story up. That's what really sparked me and wanted me to go on more investigations, more than just for podcast um, yeah. ma- material. And they asked me and said, you want to be a member and, you know, come on any investigation you want or all of them? I said, why the hell not? Might as well. So that's oh, so you're signed up now. Yeah, I'm 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 a card carrying member crazy now. Ooh. Yeah. Wait, Ooh. okay, but do they get do they let you access their their awesome equipment? <laughs> they see we don't have all the fancy equipment. We have you know uh-huh. well we you know we have the typical, you know, EMF meters, uh video, D V R, you know, security type DVRs, but we don't get into the Mm-hmm. You know, the like the ovulus is we because you know, those damn things are expensive and like the SLS cameras which are like sixteen hundred dollars a piece. I mean, for sixteen hundred dollars, I better be yeah. you know, Ca- Casper better be yeah. sh- coming up and shaking my hand. <laughs> but you know, I, no, Casper you know, better be giving you some coins. <laughs> exactly, Casper better give me some good information and some good photos so I can make some money to pay for that shit. But you know, I mean, we had your typical recorders and i'm not big on the uh you know the technology side of it i mean i want to use it because mm-hmm. but i'm big on you know personal experiences you know because no matter yeah. what piece of evidence like that photo i took that first night mm-hmm. i think i think it's a shadow figure i'm well i shouldn't say i i believe it's a shadow figure i'm not you know 100 percent because i'll never be 100 percent sure 
that it's, you know, what I think it is, but it's a good possibility. I've shown it to other people. I, matter of fact, the owner of uh, the opera house uh, has seen it. Um, I think Frankie, the founder, you know, I sent him a copy and he sent it to him because I think he wanted it for his website. And he, you know, they, they said, Hey, hey, you caught the shadow figure, you know, but no matter what that piece of evidence right there, you know, half the people think I caught some, the other half, you know, are going to be cynical and like what we talked about on my podcast, they're not going to believe it. I don't care what you piece of evidence you present them. They're not going to believe it. They're going to have a rational explanation for it. And if they can't think of one, they're going to make one up. Just like a paranormal investigator, if they're a hundred percent diehard believer, they're going to see paranormal or activity when there might be a rational. You know, it's a two-way street on both sides of the of the topic. So I don't know. I will never say it's a hundred percent evidence. You'll probably never hear me say I have found proof of ghost. Just for the mere fact, if I if you do hear me say it or you see it in one of my titles for a podcast, it's basically I'm telling right now it's clickbait. That's all it is. <laughs> Because I will never, there's no way we can prove, you know, prove it one way or the other, probably. So I will, I want to deal with more personal experiences because no matter what piece of evidence I present, there's always going to be a fraction of um, the population, I guess, is not going to believe it. So I do this for me, essentially, and I want personal, you know, personal experience. I want a ghost to come up, sit next to me and say, what the fuck are you doing, dude? I say, okay, I believe now. You know, that's what I want. What I catch on video or recording, that's not really my thing, but that's what I want. That'll, if I, that happens to me, I, you know, I'll be a hundred percent believer and I'll be drinking the Kool-Aid, but <laughs> I believe enough. I have an opinion. I have a belief and that's what I want is that personal experience. But I like to use the other things like the digital recorders, the uh, EMF meters or K2 meter or whatever you have to kind of validate those experiences. Because if you have an experience and you get, you know, some kind of scientific reading or fluctuation, you know, it helps validate. They validate one another. And just to kind of. That's true. Just, you know, like last night at Ross Opera House for the third time. They, it's a movie theater. And another that the, the projection room has been is notorious. People have said there's a portal either right outside the door or whatever. And so I went in. Now, I didn't have an EMF detector last night, but I went in and in my recordings, because I was planning on making a video and talking about it on the podcast, I even make the note that mm-hmm. there is an abundance of electronical equipment in this room. And I'm sitting there saying, okay, if I had an EMF detector, it's going to be spiking off the charts. So I sat mm-hmm. down and, and did an EVP session um, and just started talking and it wasn't you know, I was in, I did about 10 minute session, about three minutes into it. I started getting, you know, I never got the feeling of being watched or anything, but you know, I started getting pressure in the, on my temples, you know, my neck tightened up and, you know, like a pain going down my spine yeah. there. And I was like, Oh, okay. Now most people in the field will, you know, kind of say, Ooh, I'm, I'm picking up on a spirit around me, but I even make the note that no, this is probably the EMF. Oh pushing off that so here's the thing too though is right. like you know i've mentioned at the haunted house that i had there was a portal in the closet mm-hmm. and then i found the second portal that was um it was like a bunch of mirrors put together and that was something else that for whatever reason had a uh, had an ability to let spirits in and let spirits out and i remember in the portal in the closet um i i don't remember getting like the paint like the temple pain but i remember like there was never a feeling of, oh, there's a spirit there, but there was definitely a feeling of energy being there. There was like a somewhat of like an oppressive energy there that let me know like, okay, this is like a, almost like a void. It was like a energy just, that just, whether I could see something or hear something or not, I knew there was something there. Like I could feel it in my bones. You know, it could be from the EMF too, but it could also be if if there was particularly a portal there and that, that you know, the theory of that is true, it doesn't have to be a big portal. It can be something just, like, you know, a little crack of one or something that just lets spirit it's in and lets stuff out. And so that may also be part of it too. And also with the fact that you're saying there's all this machinery there, which obviously would cost a bunch of EMF and 
you know, that is rumored to cause paranormal experiences because of the higher electro electromagnetic field and the fact that spirits sort of feed off of that, really. And then initially, you're also talking about the fact that this was an opera house before, which means there's a lot of energy that came in and out of that space. Right. So it's it's sort of kind of the perfect recipe for a ghost to chill out at. Right. I mean, it's an old, it's, uh, you know, dates back, I believe, to 1871, the original portion of it. Oh, wow. And it got, got re remodeled in the 40s, I believe, you know, mm -hmm. to where they revamped it to actually show movies, and I believe, in the 40s. So it's got history. But, you know, getting back to EMF, that is, see, that's the dilemma of the paranormal. We know EMF uh, affects people differently. You know, it can cause paranoia. You know, you feel like you're being watched. But also, you know, the spirit world, if a spirit's interacting with you, you know, you kind of get the same same feelings mm -hmm. sometimes. So you, in that situation, in that particular room, in, in the surrounding area, you don't really know. Now, if yeah. I've, I've been on other investigations where I've got the exact same feeling and like a static charge, we were in a place that had no electricity whatsoever. It was... They were old cabin, like a cabin community type mm -hmm. thing with several cabins. And this was, you know, they had it decorated up and there was like a little baby crib. And, you know, we were doing a session. I reached down and kind of put my hand in where a baby would be. And I got mm -hmm. an electric charge. I mean, and it got a cold, the classic cold spot. And if my yeah. whole body just lit up like a Christmas tree, if I had lights attached to me, you know, I, I would have glowed. <laughs> I mean, it was weird, and there is absolutely no electricity that runs wow. to that building, those buildings. So you never really know. But when you like a place like yeah. that, which is it? Is it the paranormal, paranormal, or paranoia of the MF, or is it actual the portal and the spirit there? Now, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Now, what I did find that night, you know, as I, I toward the end of that session, you know, I was you know kind of having an internal conversation just you know, verbally about the EMF, you know, mm -hmm. that's in the room. I heard what I thought was a growl coming from the hallway right outside oh. the hall. So I said, Ooh, okay, let me go. I heard a growl or I heard something that sounded like a growl went outside there and I started, you know, trying to, you know, ask questions. And what I found was, you know, the floor squeaks a little or it doesn't really squeak. It's it, as you step and you shift your weight, it does make a low, kind of noise that kind of sounds like what I heard from, you know, a muffled growl, which that kind of mm -hmm. sounds. So was that just a floor shifting or was that something out there actually walking and caused the shift? I, that's, you don't, I don't know. I can't say either way. I think that's what makes the paranormal so interesting is right. that no matter what you do, science as a whole is never going to be able to say this is normal. Like, it's not because there's too many possibilities. The whole theory that they teach you in the scientific method is to remove as many variables as possible. Well, you can't remove all the variables because you don't know all the information, not all the variables. Yeah. And and every every instance will be different. So you can't arrive at this clear, clean, concise ending because you're there's no way for you to be able to prove that in every single situation... When you feel these things, this is exactly what it is because it's completely different because we are never going to be able to completely understand the paranormal world. We're never going to be able to test a spirit in, in a lab. We're not going to be able to say this is what it's made up of. We, we can't remove the variables. We can't break this thing apart to where it makes completely scientific sense. Especially like in spaces like this, it gives you the option to say, look, I went through all the logical steps of, of why this could have been something else. None of it was working. There's always something sticking out to me that was going, eh, no, because they wouldn't have done this. So it's the same thing with the paranormal. It's like, okay, well, if you've got that, that floorboard there and it particularly seems to do that when it, when someone steps on it, who stepped on it? Did right. somebody else travel over there for a second was there some sort of air draft that somehow created a difference in pressure and made the floor squeak how much weight does the floor need to squeak like there's so many different questions that at the end of the day you can't run through all the possibilities because if it was a ghost you're not a ghost <laughs> you right. know 
be able to be like, Hey, I played with the floor, dude. Thanks. Um, and that, that's, that's honestly what makes this field and the entire para the entire paranormal field so incredible is it's a constant question. It's a right. constant question that you can't have an answer to. And that's also, you know, that's part of what I like about your podcast is that you look at everything. And and even you, you know, as you're talking about being on these investigations, you're trying to debunk it. You're not just going, oh, I heard a growl. So that must be paranormal because it was a growl. There must have been a ghost there. Or, oh, my God, what if it was a demon? It must have been a demon if it growled. Right. Actually, look, you didn't even do the horror movie thing. No, actually, no, it's a lie. You did do the horror movie thing. You went towards it where most people would have been like, that was a growl. See, I don't want to don't want to be eaten and I'm running away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at it from the standpoint of I want to know more. Um, you know, that's the thing about the paranormal. You know, I even you know not to talk about my podcast too much. I did a thing about um, faking paranormal evidence where, you know, somebody mm -hmm. you can tell when somebody fakes paranormal evidence just for a mere fact a paranormal investigator you hear a noise you run to it and that doesn't mean you're yes. not scared or it doesn't mean yes. you know but as an investigator you like your cur curiosity takes over and you run to it there's been instances instances where i've been scared shitless but still went to the noise and but you always have to have that skeptical mindset to where but if you hear noise and you go running the other way, you know, it's, it does, it does no good. You know, you can't because yeah. it happens. Paranormal activity happens at the spur of the moment and then you can't set your watch by it. It's going to happen. You have to go. As soon as you hear something, you go right to it and try to debunk it. Cause if you wait 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes later, those variables have changed in the atmosphere. You know, so yeah. you can't, you can't, do your job in proving or disproving now like last night and you, we we had a situation which i'm not going to talk about on this on your show because i'm going to this is one i'm gonna have to say for mine but i'll kind of give an overview and it kind of you're gonna have to listen next week because it's i'm gonna this, 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 teaser, folks. this is a teaser. teaser it's a teaser shameless, <laughs> shameless plug for me i'm shameless what can i say uh but no i'll it, take it go <laughs> but but it you know something happened and and even between paranormal investigators at the same location on the part of the same team can have different opinions. And that's what makes a good team is you have, you need a skeptic, you need a true believer and because the truth is always somewhere in the middle. Nobody's ever completely right. It's always in the middle. We had a situation arise late in the evening, four, four thirty in the morning. And this, it happened. And so immediately we started brainstorming what caused it. What could be the causes for it? So it happens again, you know, and then I say, okay, we're going, where does that go? We go right to it and try to debunk it and, or see what caused it. So short, make it short and not give too much away. I start debunking. I find out I am able to replicate exactly what happened. And it wasn't a sound. We were getting noises and knocks. But it wasn't as, I'll kind of give a little hint, it wasn't sound, it was visual. I was able to get it oh. to do exactly what happened. Not not exactly, but get it to do pretty much the same thing. Now, here's here's where the problem is. What I had to do could be done, could not be done, or how should I say this? You had to do exactly what I did to replicate it or get it to do that. Now, was it some... We, I know it wasn't the wind. I know it wasn't the furnace. Someone had to be there to do it. Something had to do that for it to happen. Now, it, well, I, oh, I, shouldn't say, shit. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say somebody had to. There is one other explanation, which I can't really say uh -huh. because that'll give it away. It's one of two things. Somebody had to do exactly what I did. Somebody had to do it, or there's one possible thing it could have been, but I don't know. Now, I do it. We start talking about it. And uh, Frankie, the founder of the group, you know, he's like, that's paranormal right there. I'm like, yeah, but I mm -hmm. did. I did. It. I agree with you. I agree with you to a certain extent. He goes, do you believe it was a ghost? I said, I'm not going to say it's a ghost. I don't know. Because there is that other variable that I'm not 100% yeah. sure of. But it is interesting. He said, but it's paranormal. I said, you're right. It's paranormal because I can't explain it. 
I don't know yep. exactly what caused that, it. And that's when it falls down to. And I'm not, if I had to put a number on I'm, it, I'm going to say I'm about 80%. It, it was a ghost because we were getting noises at coming from that exact location, you know, knocks, shuffles. Um, when I was in there, I went in there two different times to kind of debunk it and try to find where it was coming from. And it was fairly warm because we had the heat on. I walked into, I, as I was doing what I was doing, a cold, a cold spot just came over me. So, you know, cold spots generally are, they, people say it's, you know, a spirit trying to manifest or whatever, you know, drawing air, energy out of the air. So that's paranormal. But I'm not going to say it was a ghost per se right now, but it's interesting. It is paranormal because I can't explain it. With all the noises, that cold spot, what actually happened, it's very fascinating. And it's probably one of the spookiest things. Oh, and there's one other thing. It ha- It did it on command, too. Oh. Now, is the command, was it all a coincidence? I don't know. It happened and stopped happening on command. So there's my... See, see, as a person who who doesn't, I used to believe in coincidences as a kid, but I found that sometimes too many things happen that I just I can't like I can't believe that it's just a coincidence. And and for me, in my mind, I think that sometimes these things happen, and it's either to help us learn something, help us notice something. It's meant, it's meant for us. Like, it, it's just, I think in the purest term for me to be able to say it, it's meant, it, it's supposed to mean something to us. And it's supposed to affect or shape or change us some way uh, and change our future really a little bit because I, I just can't, I can't believe in coincidences anymore because I've had them happen too many times where if you just play connect the dots and you do a little bit of detective work, like, you'll see that, like, this actually really is supposed to mean something to you. Like, like these things are supposed to mean something to me, or I'm supposed to be watchful, or I'm supposed to take something away from this experience. And if I just sit there and I call it a coincidence, I'm just sitting here chalking up to like, oh, okay, well, you know, ooh, this was just a thing that happened instead of taking, uh, instead of listening to the meaning behind these occurrences. And the other thing, too, that I'm, uh, as you're talking about these stories, the fact that you've gone back to this place every time and you're saying especially in your second one where you're saying like it's not this place typically doesn't have like a dark energy but you got an apparition which doesn't necessarily mean that it was a bad or negative thing at all just you know you got an apparition you may have gotten an apparition in case you know anybody wants to sit down and try to disprove it and go through all the stuff but you got a photo with something in it that's abnormal and you've got knocks and bangs and you've got an evp I wonder if, one, you guys have all this technology and all these things, and we kind of touched on it earlier. Spirits are attracted to it because they need energy, and electricity is just energy, and they're able to handle it better and manifest and do whatever it is that they want. But I also wonder if, so I've got a couple of different theories here, which is, one, if activity has been slowly ramping up, which it sort of sounds like maybe it has been, either it's, yes, there's a portal. Yes, there's a portal because of the high amounts of EMF. Someone's bringing um, spirits there because they keep, not necessarily you, but like people who keep coming back. And also the fact that it's a working establishment that is a movie theater. With tons of different people who do come in there. And so perhaps the spirits are interested in this place and in this area because they know they're going to get attention. They know that, you know someone is honestly really looking for them. And so to them, they're saying, hey, it's my buddy. They're back. And so it is communicating with you in the best way that it knows how to communicate because it feels like it's now getting the attention. Like, I feel like as a spirit, some spirits don't want to be noticed and they don't want to, you know, they just want to be in the background and they're fine. But I think like if you're getting, if you're knocking, you're banging, you're shuffling, you're doing all this stuff, like you want acknowledgement. Like that's, that's you screaming for attention. If you've got someone who's coming back and constantly giving you that attention, you want them to keep coming back. So perhaps it's attempting to manifest or attempting to get more of your attention because it, it likes you being there and it wants you to keep coming back. And it knows like if it keeps giving you that, you'll keep coming. You know, that's a, that's a double-edged sword. These. Mm-hmm. With these places that actually allow investigators in. Now, 
I don't know whether it helps or hurts. Like what you said, you know, some spirits probably want the attention, but then other, you know, I firmly believe that some of these places can be haunted out, essentially. You know, they get investigated so many times, and probably yeah. the spirits just say, you know what, Jesus Christ, I'm tired of you people coming in here and bothering <laughs> me. It's just, I'm just going to be quiet. You know, because that happened, I went to I went to Thornhaven, and I kind of got beat up a little bit on Twitter about this, because I went to Thornhaven, and I was super psyched about this one, just for mere fact, Ghost Adventures had been there, Zach and the boys had been there and found some great evidence. So I'm like, cool, I'm going to go there, and this is the time I'm going to get that ghost to come up to me and say, what you doing, motherfucker? I'm like, cool. This is what I'm. This is what I'm waiting for. <laughs> it didn't happen. I walked in there and I was like, did an investigation, and it was over Halloween, I think. Yeah, because we had our little Halloween party, so there's probably ten people there. I think only that night. So I was getting a lot of noise contamination. I wasn't getting anything, and I started getting frustrated. And I actually shot some good video, but I didn't. I haven't aired it or put it on YouTube or even really talked about it because actually I was kind of being a dick because I was got to the point where I was, I was provoking. I was calling out these spirits. I was calling out Zach Baggins and the boys because I was pissed. They got all this information and all this evidence and I wasn't getting shit. So I was pissed by the end of the night. I left at like four o'clock in the morning and said, screw it. I'm, I got an hour and a half drive home. I'm out of here. And I kind of did a podcast. I just press it. This is this is probably why you got sick. That right there, I take it. I am I'm going to take. No, oh, you, oh, so, so you're saying <laughs> the Ghost Adventures <laughs> Cruise has has hexed me. Great. Now I like Zach and the boys. I like them. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I think that, like I said, in my pocket. I think they could find <laughs> evidence in a Wendy's bathroom. But I mean, <laughs> I, I have no problem with them. I like it's entertaining, and that's what we have to keep in mind. And those shows are meant to be entertaining. An investigation in real life isn't an hour's worth. You're not there for an hour and you don't get that much. Yeah. You have to sit there for hours upon hours to get one yeah. thing. But my point is, you know, that place, I didn't get anything. And that has been investigated more times than you can care to think about. And so I'm like, I know people have experienced things here, but I didn't experience it. Now, was it just a, an off night? The ghost went on vacation and went to Florida or they didn't like me. There's so many variables that come into it. But I tried everything. I was pissed. I said, screw it. I'm done. And I kind of bragged or not bragged about it, but I talked about it on Twitter. I did the podcast about it where I kind of trashed it a little bit. I I didn't want to trash it, but it turned into me trashing Thornhaven a little bit. And I had pe- I had some people actually kind of, I had experiences there. Well, okay. I'm glad you had it. I didn't have shit. And that's, that's what makes paranormal so freaking interesting is you might have something. I, I might not get nothing. And, from yeah. time to t- like my three investigations at Ross, first one was pretty active. Second one was dead for half of it and got pretty active in the end, but it still wasn't overwhelmingly active. It felt a little darker. Mm-hmm. It was just a mood change. And last night, all hell broke loose, it seemed like. But it started out fairly slow. We got a few EVPs in the beginning, a few knocks and bangs. And it, after three, four o'clock, it started ramping up. I mean, we were getting. It sounded like doors shutting. I mean, it footsteps um, sounded like chairs were moving. And it was just, it kind of went off the chain a little bit. And then the what I'm going to talk about next week, which I'm teasing once again, this happened mm-hmm. and I've never had this happen. I mean, this, I mean, when it first happened, I I was like, oh shit. I don't even think on the video because I was recording video time. I think you hear me say, oh shit. And mm-hmm. so, I, you know, but there are explanations for it. It, it. it could be a ghost. It could be something else. And I'm not 100%, 100% sure. You'll never hear, like I said earlier, you'll never hear me say, yeah. I have proof of the supernatural or su- proof of ghosts. It's never going to happen because in my lifetime, there's only one way for me to find out the exact 100% proof. And that's when I punch my ticket and I'm done. Then I'll yeah. know. Now, maybe I'll come back and tell you, hey, you're right. You never know. <laughs> Phil, if I see you manifesting in my home, I'm oh. going to be like, go home, go. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't take <laughs> orders very well. I will, I will push you out of this house. And see. That's no way to be. That is no, don't, that is no way to be. You put your little white light around you. Go ahead. Fine. That's fine. 
be that way. You're, you're, in other words, you're you're gonna hold you're gonna hold it over my head that you had that one episode. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Payback is a Stay. bitch. No, but you- I will sick my dog on you. <laughs> hey, if I'm a spirit, it doesn't matter. I don't have a body. Go ahead, Rover. Right away. I'm good. <laughs> no. But that's, you know, that's a beautiful I, thing about paranormal, though. You know, yeah. it, it, we'll never we'll never solve this riddle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's the debate is really what is, you know, interesting between a skeptic and a cynic and a true believer. You know, that's what makes it interesting. And see, you know, I wonder, too, because the thing is, just because I, I, I really... I would always get so mad when you would see these shows on TV where they would go somewhere and, you know, they sit down and they talk with the person or before they even sit down and talk with the person, they get the email and they immediately don't believe them by the things that they're saying. And they may take the chance and actually go or the few times that they said, okay, we do believe you. We do think that you have something they'd go. And just because they didn't experience something, they would immediately say, oh, well, you don't have anything there. And the thing is, we're not all going to experience the same thing. You could have people with, you could have two psychics with different psychic abilities and at different psychic levels. And one may see the spirit fully manifest there and the other one might just hear it and might not be able to see it. Everybody has, is, and, and is going to have different experiences. And that's the important thing to remember. Like, if you're doing an investigation where you're actually like, trying to help someone, like, you can't sit there and say, okay, well, you don't have anything. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely people who do it for money, or they do it for fame, or they do it just to get on the show. And those people, like, they piss me off more than anything else, because they're part of the reason why people stop and they go, well, the paranormal can't be real, because, you know, look at all these people who have faked it, and, like, they admit that they faked it, just to get on a show, just for their 15 seconds of fame. But, but... That's not everybody. You can't, like, generalize it. That's not everybody. Everybody is going to have different experiences. Just because you go there and you don't see anything or you don't feel anything or you don't find anything that day or that week or however long it is that you're there, doesn't mean there isn't anything there. Sometimes ghosts hide from people, too. Sometimes spirits are tricky. And and you have to, you have to take that into consideration when you're doing something. And so I appreciate the fact that, that you... Even though at Thornhaven, like you didn't have something happen to you, you you went there fully expecting to have something happen to you. You went there with like the thought process that this place is probably haunted. Like this pr- place is probably going to be like that place that you're going to find something. And I understand completely, you know, why you're disappointed and everything. But like you didn't walk away going, you know, even for the people on Twitter who were like, you know, coming back at you. You didn't say they didn't have experiences. You said you didn't have an experience where you were. And it's on both sides, too. Like, sometimes people have an experience, and they're like, okay, well, on this case, like, you said you didn't have an experience, and they're thinking, well, you're saying, oh, well, their experience isn't valid either. That's not what you said. You said you didn't have one. Not that they didn't have one, not that the place isn't haunted, not that anything. You went there with a full open mind that, yes, this would be the one place you would find something, and you didn't get it. You were disappointed, and you're frustrated, and I think that's understandable. I mean, we're all human. It, anytime you would you would invest that much time and energy and excitement into something and not be able to get the, the like what you're hoping for back, yeah, you're gonna be disappointed. But like people need to stop like this whole generalization process that like either every experience is gonna be paranormal or if they, if you don't have an experience then it wasn't paranormal or all this shit. Everyone's different. Every experience is gonna be different. And again, that goes back to what we were talking about earlier with like the whole variables and everything like that and why you have to investigate and why you have to look into things is. Every person's experience is going to be different. I am sensitive and whatever other term you want to call me enough that if I watch a show, I can tell you if something happened there or not. Even even if it's it doesn't have to be at that location. It can just be from the person and from their, what they're describing. And I can tell you if they had something or not. I will feel something. I'll feel something about about that experience. Like like. I don't even understand it. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's just the chills that come over me. So whenever I feel this, like I know 110% it's a true experience. And there's times where I don't feel that. And, you know, perhaps it was for fame. Perhaps it was for something. But I don't know. That doesn't mean anything at all. Who knows? I Maybe I'm having an off day. That typically isn't the case. But I, who knows? 
but it's not like my place to sit there and be like, yeah, you had an experience or you didn't have an experience. It's no one's, no one, and, and that, you know, that's the biggest thing that I, I talk about on this podcast, even when I'm doing like the little like positive part at the end of, of the episodes is that whatever experience it is that you have, however it is that you're feeling, however, like anything, you know, you have to listen to that. Because when you start not listening to yourself and you start not listening to your gut, like that is the biggest injustice you can have to yourself. There's so many times where we sit there and we go, oh, that was a coincidence. Or, you know, we just brush it off. And it's until it happens so incessantly and we're unable to figure it out that we call it something else do we actually truly believe. And sometimes it doesn't need to get to that point. Like it doesn't, you don't have to get to that point to have, to have that that moment of of clarity of like okay well i've done everything that i can do i i've tried to brush this off i don't even know how many times i don't want to acknowledge it and it keeps happening because the ghost doesn't give a shit about what you want it doesn't care if it cared when you if you told it to leave it would have left it right. didn't do that so clearly it doesn't care about what you want what it wants is your acknowledgement and you're going to have to acknowledge it in order to be able to deal with it right. and sometimes that's all you have to do you just, you just have to acknowledge that, like, I think dealing with the paranormal can be, like, one of the most humbling experiences because you have to sit and be like, honestly, sometimes I truly don't know. I don't have all the answers. I don't know if I'm right or if I'm wrong. And I have to accept that maybe somebody else is right and maybe I am wrong or maybe I'm right and someone else is wrong. And, and it can be a debate and it can be an open-minded debate between people who, you know, just like your, your team now I can say that, <laughs> is, um, is, you know, you, you guys can talk about it and work it out and, and see, you know, collectively come up with something. But at the end of the day, each one of you have a, a personal opinion about it and you're able to share that in this open, accepted way where each of you can say, you know what, we don't have the, all the answers, but to me, this is what it is. And to you, this is what it is. And you know what? I accept that. And that's really important because a lot of us didn't have that. A lot of us were called crazy. A lot of us didn't know what was going on and and it was just it was a huge mess so i feel like the paranormal and this topic and sharing this topic and talking about it helps bring us together in this like new honestly awesome way right uh, yeah. um oh, no uh, no good i uh, you know and and not to get too political, but that's kind of what we need. We need people today to kind of be able to be on both sides of this fence. Let's yes. talk about paranormal. You know, just like last <laughs> night, I'm not 100% sure what happens paranormal. He thinks it is paranormal or thinks it's a ghost. It, it is paranormal because we can't explain it. You know, and he's pretty, you know, he's level-headed. He doesn't jump right to the go. He's he's a debunker first as well, but he's just seeing it a little bit different than I am. And there's no need for it. We could sit there and argue. We could probably still be arguing about it, but there's no sense. He has his opinion. I'm not saying he's wrong. I think he might be right, but I'm not 100% convinced. And that's really, that's the way everybody needs to be about everything these days. You know, we can be both be right to a certain extent because if anything my mother taught me, no matter, there's always two sides to every story, and the truth is always somewhere in the middle. That's the same with everything in this in life. The truth is always somewhere in the middle. Now, is it a hundred percent a ghost? No, it might not be. It might be a werewolf. I don't know. <laughs> but maybe, but I will maybe it's a were mouse. That's that's why it, it hit that floorboard and then it, it took off. <laughs> well, you know, and, and that's the thing. This. Storage. It was in a storage room. You know, it wasn't even really a storage room. It's a there's walls. There's no roof. It's like somebody built walls and made like a little storage room, where the noises were coming from there. What caused this to happen happened in there. And it, your listeners are probably so pissed off because I'm not saying what it is right now. You're probably losing <laughs> listeners as we speak. Hey, it's fine. They'll they'll be fine. <laughs> but you know. And this is an older building, so I'm I almost guarantee you there's a few mouse or maybe even some big ass rats. I don't know. And now, if with that storage room, they some of those noises could have been a critter, you know, shuffling or moving. You know, it could be. Now, some of the noises it had to be one hell of a big one, but you know, it could bump things. <laughs> so I don't know. That's one thing. Well, that's the beauty of the paranormal. You're searching for something yeah. that you'll never find the answers to. Now, I will say this though. I would like to have your abilities make life a lot easier. 
See, that's why you should go paranormal I mean, investigate. You okay, so so here's so here's my thing. So I am okay with paranormal investigating because I feel like I don't have a choice. So the thing is, like, if there's a spirit somewhere and I walk in, I'm gonna immediately know something's there. It's not like it's going to be difficult for me to really know. I pick up on things so easily that it's it's not it's not a surprise to me if something's there because I'm just like, oh, okay, like I feel it immediately. Like this, even sometimes, sometimes I just have to drive by the place and I'll tell you there's something there, or I don't have to go in. I don't have to like be there at a certain time. Like I don't need any of that. Like I just know immediately. So. I don't really, like, when I was younger, I definitely thought about it more. Like, I definitely thought about, like, maybe this would definitely be something that I really wanted to do because I sort of, I just wanted to help people with my abilities. So I thought, okay, this would be the easiest way for me to help someone is to go on paranormal investigations and I could come in and really actually help these people, like, let them know something's there or if something's not there, you know, sit down with them and see, like, what are they going through? that maybe that's what is making them feel like something's there. Maybe, like, that's creating, like, that paranoia that something's there. Or maybe they have something going on, like, at work, and there is something, like, at work, and, like, they're just, like, bringing that that negative energy home with them. And so while there is something at their work but not something at their home, like, they feel like there's something at their home. Like, you don't know. Like, there's so many different things. But there's a couple things that stop me, which one is I just, I sort of feel like, In the places and the towns that I've been in, especially like here in Florida, like I haven't traveled that much. Um, I haven't traveled that much in Florida. I haven't traveled that much like outside of Florida, but I've definitely been able to like so easily pick up on stuff that there's no investigating for me. Like, like as far as like the spiritual or the paranormal part goes, there's no investigation for me. I can, I can tell you something's there. So the only real investigation part is me trying to figure out how did this thing get there and i can have a a pretty as i'm picking up on this thing i can also typically pick up on how did it get there or if or if i can't pick up on it and i i can pick up like little things like maybe it was brought there maybe someone conjured it up maybe like it was left from something else maybe it was attached from something else so that that would involve like dealing with the family a little bit more or you know doing a little bit of research in that part but as far as like the actual paranormal part goes, where I'm sitting there, I'm getting like indefinite proof that there's something there. I don't need that because I know that there's something there. So I almost sort of feel like, and in that case in point, like that excitement that you you would feel going, oh my god, like I know something's here, like 110. percent I there's no way for me to like not believe something's there. I'm not gonna have that because I know going in. The only real difference would be if I got a picture or something that I would hope that somebody else might uh, might believe in it. But just like you've had a picture in it, like people don't always believe in it. You know, they're going to try to debunk it or try to do whatever it is they feel comfortable to do to be able to say this is not this didn't actually really happen. In, In the in the towns that I've been in, there probably isn't really much of anything that's been that that has a spirit there that I haven't either met or if I would just go there in the normal daytime regular hours that I wouldn't just know was there I might just get a clearer picture because nighttime it's it's just easier for my spirit to come out at that point Mm -hmm. but I would get a feeling from it just like um I talked about recently that I was when I was looking for houses me how many houses I felt like had something even the house um the house that I uh, first house I put it put in an offer for I went in the house and the house was fine, but I had an off feeling. I couldn't figure out what it was, but I knew it was coming from a hallway. So I was walking around. And I was just like, and, and this is, this is when I was not open. And I'm like, there's something, there's something, there's, and I stopped and I was like, it's this. And it was a wall of African masks. And I picked out two of them. And I was like, these two, I was like, they're going to be a pain in the ass because they like the house. So you can take the mask all you want to, but they like the house. And so they may go with the mask, but there's going to be part of them that's still here. And spirits don't have to. And I was just listening to a podcast the other day where they said this. And I, 
I don't think I've ever said it. And I don't think I've ever really heard anyone say it before. Which Spirits don't have to just stay in one place. They can move. They can be in mo- more than one place at the same time. Like, I remember there were shows that talked about that and they got a whole bunch of slack because there was like, well, spirit can't do it. Yes, it can. If it's been around long enough or it's old enough, it can do it. It's amassed enough enough energy to be able to to pull that off. And with my concern was like that how like I knew if I bought that house, which I, I love the house that I, I thought it was perfect. I just thought it was absolutely perfect. And enough that I I knew that with that house, those the, the spirits, because they liked the house and they'd been in the house for long enough with the math, I knew that they were always going to have some familiarity with the house. And so if those maths were ever destroyed, those spirits were going to go back there. It would it, it would be easy for them to do unless they decided that they liked the family. So they were, they came in with the, with the mass and they were attached to the mass and that was their home. But they also very much enjoyed the, the house. And if anyone ever destroys those masks or does anything, they're just going to come right back over here because they, they have, they've been here for so long. They have something. And I had no idea how long the owners have been there, but I found out later they've been there over 20 years and they'd had those masks for about 15. So those masks had been there for quite some time. So they had a, they had a bond to the mask itself, but also bond to that property. And I wouldn't have found that out had I not, you know, as I was going through and going on with the, with the purchase of the house, um, I just came in in conversation with my real estate agent and she told me, I was like, oh, so I was right. Great. But you see what I mean? Like, like that was, I went during the daytime. It was middle of the afternoon. I didn't see them manifest. You know, I don't know if that's what they did. And I also had myself closed off, but I could feel it. And if I walk in a building, like, like there's no, I almost feel like a person who doesn't have the ability would have that bewilderment and that like, not to say I don't have an appreciation for it, but that appreciation for it, because they don't have the ability, if they have the experience, you're like, oh my God, like this proves so much or oh, like, like, you know, that excited feeling. I don't have that because my first feelings of that were fear. And I've gotten to like an understanding point of it where like now I understand it, but now it's so normal for me that. I'm only now beginning to reappreciate that. I don't know that just realization that what I can do, not everyone can do. And I almost kind of feel like with my gifts, it's not really for me to appreciate. I think maybe m- with my gifts, like I'm just supposed to support and help other people. And maybe if I can teach them some way or guide them some way, then great. But I almost sort of feel like maybe it's not for me to experience that excitement feeling but actually really just help and support other people who don't have those abilities i mean you know i've told you a couple of experiences i've had in this house which this house is a clean house it's a pure house nothing bad can stay here not even anything good can stay here for more than maybe a couple hours it's got to go it doesn't stay here it's it's because of the path of the house and where the path the house lies and also my energy too but in saying that i have had experiences here i actually had one experience that it was really interesting because it was actually caught on my security camera by my mother as well as me while I was in the middle of experiencing it. And then I had a bad experience where I had one of the worst dreams I've ever had in my life. And it wasn't because there was anything here. It was an impression of something else. And that impression stick with me and affected me the entire day until basically when I was asleep at night and... Uh, I was lucky where after I woke up, I kind of cleansed it away and made it go away and wasn't left with anything. And, you know, there there was nothing, anything like that. But, you know, I have had a good experience in this house and I have had a bad experience in this house. I I wasn't bewildered. Uh, you know, I, I agree with everything you just said, really. I mean, and I understand you probably just need to get you need to get away from it from time to time and when you live it. But and here's the, here's my thought process. I would like to have your ability to a certain extent or, you know, be able to communicate and talk just for the mere fact that way I have some answers. Now, I know a lot of mm-hmm. investigating teams do have mediums and empaths. Yeah. But here's and here's the cynic in me. And not that I say people I don't I don't trust anybody anyway, but I I want to experience things for myself. 
I could be in a location yeah. and somebody, somebody said, I'm feeling somebody right next to me. I look. I don't see shit. I don't know if that person's full of shit. I might even know them, but I don't. I don't know to where if I had your ability or, you know, ability of that magnitude, I would actually be able to, it would be more clarity for me and would help b- mm-hmm. my validation. So, you know, I, yeah. and it kind of probably sound like an ass just for the fact I say some, some of the people are liars, but I don't know. I can't, it's the paranormal. If I can't prove it, I can't, um, if I don't see it or I don't hear it, I can't take your word for it just for, because I don't see it yeah. or don't hear it. I mean, I'm not saying. That I don't think that's being alive. asked. I think that's just being. You're just. You're being. And I think most people are like that too. I think that's. I, I mean, they go into the field. I mean, it's to answer a question or to understand. Like, I mean, I right now I do this this podcast, but I still. I mean, I'm still learning. I constantly Google things. I was googling stuff yesterday. What's the difference between a medium, a sensitive, and an empath? Because I have tons of abilities. And I don't know what they fall under. I have not a clue. All I know is I can do them. And I've finally listened to myself that, look, you can do these things. And so you've got to understand that you can do them. But I don't know what they're called. I don't know what they fall under. I have no idea who can do them. I don't know. I'm quite honestly a little scared to talk about because I feel like. Oh, great. Don't they're, they're start with this me now. Jeez. <laughs> oh. My week was shit, and now you're telling me that you're just, <laughs> uh, we're about ready to end this right now. Lose my number. No, go ahead. Proceed. No, it's just, it's just when I know, you know, and, and we've also talked about the fact that I was called crazy for a very long time. I thought, like, I needed, I legitimately thought I needed to be committed at some point in my life because there's just like i'm hearing voices i'm seeing things that aren't there i'm feeling things all the time i feel other people's emotions and it gets so overwhelming and and if it wasn't you know eventually really for my spirit guide and just me going well look i've seen this stuff enough that it must be some i had other experiences that i think most i think if i was to actually finally talk about them some people would be like that didn't happen and then other people would be like, thank you for bringing that up because it happened to me too. And I didn't think it was a real thing. And I think like, that's why I do this at the end of the day really is, is to support and help people. And if I can help guide them a little bit, then great. But there are, you know, there are things in the paranormal world that like, if you bring them up, I mean, there's going to be some people who are going to be really happy about it and you're going to lose some people. There's some people who are just going to be like, bye. You're weird. I'm done with you. Goodbye. And then there's some topics in the paranormal world that if you go to like basically paranormal level two, (laughs) they're like, "Eh, something wrong with you. I'm just sticking here with ghosts, demons, and angels. Bye. Like that's, and, and there's like, there's different things, levels of acceptability for people, I think. And that's what I mean. Like, um, yeah, Reiki healers and that they heal with energy and stuff. Some people believe in that. Some people don't, but I am not a Reiki healer whatsoever, but um, the paranormal experience that I was talking about is I was able to heal someone's ailments and somehow the person knew that I did it. And when they, they got better, they thanked me and I had, I had never met the person before in my life, but it was someone that my mother, my mother worked with the person's family and she's very close with the the um, that person at the time. And so she took me to the hospital with them, which is why I will forever not like hospitals. I did something and I was able to help that person. And I it hurt me at the time when I did it. And I was like, I got to go. And my mom took me home. And then the next person or the next day, the person was better. And they their health continued to improve. And then they met me and they gave me a hug. And it was like they had known me for forever. And they're just like, thank you for whatever you did. And I was like, you, you know, I did something. And they were like, yes, I like, I, I, I can't explain to you how I know you did something, but I know, like, I know you do. And they had never had that experience before. They'd never had anything like that happen to them before, but that's just what they felt. But it's like, if I was to sit there and go through the entire experience, 
and share everything that happened and share what I felt and what happened with me and what happened with that person and how they felt and the after effects. Some people just like, they couldn't take it. They just turn off and be like, this is impossible. And I can't believe anything that essentially comes out of your mouth because this is like a whole level above like what I know and what I'm comfortable with. And so I can't believe you because I can't, I can't fathom that to be possible. But I think for me, when it breaks down to paranormal, I don't think that we should be able to like to sit there and say nothing can be possible. Like it's different, like whether you believe in it or not, than if you say something's possible or not, because isn't the paranormal field and the community supposed to be this area where like you feel like everything is possible? Like, isn't like a lot of, I mean, if you look at children, they have not been told that things are not impossible, that things are impossible. If they have this thing happen, they just think it's normal. They don't think anything wrong about it at that point in time. I just I've I've got I've got weird experiences, and sometimes I Google stuff. And if Google is a is a huge help for me sometimes. Right, you know, oh, absolutely. Um, that's the beautiful thing about the paranormal. Mm-hmm. You know, but you're gonna have you have you know a spectrum. You have. I'm not mm-hmm. to use right and left. I'm not getting political, but you have one end of the spectrum here on the left, which is mm-hmm. kind of somewhat, eh, you know, mild stuff. Then you have the far right, which could be some stuff that sounds like it's really batshit crazy, you know, and everything in between. And but you have to keep an open mind about it. just uh, like my next, my next actual next topic on my podcast, which I don't, I think I mean, my days are real screwed up. The one. The podcast I'm not talking about is not next week. It's a week after. I already have a topic mm-hmm. for this for this Tuesday. Just just to get my <laughs> podcast back out there again is I want to cover Bigfoot and cryptozoology. Okay. You know I don't now. I mean I don't have an opinion either way, and it's still paranormal because you know we don't understand it. We don't know. Science doesn't explain it. You know they try to. You know they haven't found anything yet, so it's still classified paranormal. But it's mm-hmm. one of those topics that I don't know. I've never seen anything, you know. I so I I don't have an opinion. Well, I have an opinion, but I don't believe one way or the other. Is it, is like Bigfoot possible? Absolutely, it's possible. Anything's possible. We know mm-hmm. that a uh, big Bigfoot type creature walked the earth. You know, Gigantopithecus, what ten thousand years ago with humans, and it. Probably Did you just went. throw out a scientific name? Yes. I just went all Oh, all shit. Scientific. I am a man of many Snow talents. just made this. He made this podcast official. People. Yes. Official right, right there. Exactly. Damn. You're welcome. But, you know, <laughs> I, but I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen Bigfoot. I've never seen, you know, the Loch Ness Monster or whatever. I've seen an alligator, which is basically a freaking dinosaur. <laughs> Matter of fact, it is a dinosaur. It's just it a really is. small one. It's a really small one. It was around with the dinosaurs. They shrunk a little. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen, but it doesn't mean it's, is it possible? Absolutely. Anything's possible. But, mm-hmm. you know, but you have to have an open mind. Just like what we talked yeah. about on my, you know, the whole witchcraft things. And, you know, I'm a little bit more skeptical about that than, you know, you might think that just because I go out and talk to myself and try to talk to ghosts in the dark, I might be more open to it. I'm, a, I don't have any experience with it, so I don't know. So I'm a little bit more, you know, on the fence about it than other things. So you have to have an open mind. And what people need to realize is when you close your mind, you are limiting your knowledge, you know, and the more closed minded you are, the less you, are seen of the big picture. You know, we don't, we don't have all the answers. We'll never have all the answers in our lifetime, but you know, that's part of life is the journey to find these answers. Now we both might be wrong. There might be the atheist might be right. You die and you just cease Mm -hmm. to exist. You know, they might be right. I don't know. I God, I hope not, but also I've never, I've never seen God, but yet it's okay that, you know, we believe in God. You know, if you, believe in God or your God or whatever. I've never, I've never, never seen him, but my mother expects me to believe in him wholeheartedly, but I've never had, I've never seen him. I've had more, theoretically, I've had more experience with, you know, Casper than I've had with God, you know, but I, of course, maybe, maybe 
God is doing all this stuff. I don't know. That's the thing. We don't know. We will never know yeah. until till we die and I come back and haunt you. Because <laughs> I'm, trust me, I'm old. I'm older than you. I'm a lot older than you, actually. So I will die first. So just remember payback. Well, just remember, of course, you can get back at me. You know, you threatened the old astral projection thing from two weeks ago. So, that, hey, <laughs> uh huh. I got a memory like an elephant. <laughs> but <laughs> the point is, the point is, we have to stay open minded. Even if you don't believe, you have to be open to the possibility. I mean, why not? What What do you have to lose? And like, get, get like for religion, for instance, not to get too religious either, but most people that believe in religion or have, not most, I say there is a portion of religious people are just religious for the mere fact of what if. I don't want to be left out in the cold if it's true. And that's not because they have a 100% belief. They're believing because, well, it's the alternative. What, what am I losing here now? Yeah. You know? And, you yeah. know, you, you have to just keep an open mind. And, you know, you never know when, what's going to happen. Well, you know, I just, I think that sitting down and having the conversations and as you're saying, being open-minded, I think that especially when people are like wondering, you know, if they want to have a paranormal experience or something. Um, I know I did an episode about that recently and I said that, you know, just open yourself back up to the possibility that there are things out there that you don't know. You know, believe what you're telling the universe is, I don't believe anything is impossible. You're opening that door and the universe is going, all right, cool. So you crack it a little bit, I'll help you out. And that's just what you get. And, you know, no one knows what comes after this one podcast that I used to listen to all the time. You just say, why don't people ever ask, like, how's it going over there? <laughs> You know, you know, is there a big white light? Like, why does why does no one ever ask those questions? And they, you know, what what if that's what the ghost wants to talk about? Why is it always like, hey, how would you die? I've begun to realize that I humanize spirits way too much. But at the end of the day, that's what a spirit is. It's a human. It's, it's the non corporeal, the non physical part of ourselves anymore. Right. And do you really want to sit there and think about how you died? Like, do you really want to sit there and discuss that? Yeah. Like when you have a negative experience and it and it like really hurts you, don't you need time before you're able to discuss that experience? So yeah, maybe like sit there and be like, "Hey, are you having a party up there? <laughs> right? Are there you people know. floating around with wings? Like, <laughs> ask those questions. Maybe you'll get a response." You know, that's like, I mean, it's, you don't know. You know, it's like I've I've people all these paranormal investigators investigate graveyards. I, I'm yeah. I, I mean, I'm sorry if I, I'm, I think I said this on the podcast maybe, but I know why the hell, if I'm, when I die and I'm hanging out in a graveyard for one, I'm not going to be in a graveyard. Just for a matter of fact, I played enough in the dirt. I don't want to be buried in it. But you know, why the hell would it, a spirit hang out in a graveyard? Now I'm not, I've, I've been to a graveyard and done a paranormal investigation. I will freely admit it, but I'm like, I don't think, I think this is the last place it would be, a, a spirit would be. Especially if you subscribe to the theory that they're not tied to a location or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and they can travel wherever, you know, hell, go to Paris then, or, you know, go to New York City or L.A. or something, you know, I'm not hanging out in a graveyard with my rotting corpse. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, to go back to like the thought process of when we were talking about astral projection, and I said that some people believe that if you cut the tide from your body to your spirit, that then you die, and then you're, because your spirit can't come back to your body, and so your spirit is just out there wandering. But like, why the fuck would I sit there and be like, hey, yeah, I'm going to sit here and mourn the fact that I can't, like, I don't have a body anymore. Like, that's a horrible way to live the rest of your existence. All right. Now we can also get into, but, if... I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, maybe that's the whole concept of heaven and hell. Maybe that's hell. A spirit that is stuck in one freaking place, that is, that's hell. You know, I, who knows? We, that's the point. We don't know. I mean, my dad, he has this theory where he says um, he believes that everybody makes their own hell or their own heaven when they die. And I mean, you know, whether you believe that or not, when you're thinking about this topic of can you travel, can you not? Do you spend your time in mourning? Can you not? I mean, I would, I would think that a, a, a when we call a spirit a trapped ghost, don't we think of them as a trapped ghost because they're stuck in one place and they can't go where they want to go? Right. Like, 
what type of level of like fucking hell is that i'm sorry but like if like if you had a place that you you hate like what if what if your spirit is trapped in high school for all of eternity that's hell that is literally utter hell but see but see that that would be that and it's per it's a from person to person see if my body was trapped in high school i'd be all right i had a good time in high school i had fun i mean that would be bad for me Actually, I've always said my body was trapped in high school. I would have burned the damn place down. Well, you know, but I mean, but it's that's perspective, though. I mean, what's your hell is different than my hell. That's why, like, you yeah. know, I I agree with your with your father that you know you make your own hell. Basically, it may, if hell might be you're stuck in one place, or hell might be you have to relive your worst sin over and over and over again, or your worst yeah. memory over and over again. So, but we don't know. That's one of those things. I will find out in the end. Okay. So that is episode one of our, well, part one of this interview and part two will be next week. I'm not going to tell you the topic of part two because I have this feeling like I already said it last week. Maybe I'm not sure, but, but if I did it, let's just, let's just believe that this is going to be a surprise (laughs) and that no one knows. (laughs) No one but myself and Phil knows. Um, thank you guys for listening to it. I know it was a longer episode than normal, um, but I do hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you enjoyed sort of the flow and everything with it. Um, and I just I really appreciate you guys. I'm hoping to be making some changes to the website soon, including uh, the hosting and things like that. So once that's done, I'll let you guys know. Uh, but in the meantime, just... You know, take care of yourself. Um, For the thing that I've learned this week, it's not really something I've learned, but something I've been talking a lot about with people, which is boundaries. Um, Being able to say no. It's really interesting because I feel like, you know, I I had to go through a period of trying to find myself and trying to find out who I, who I was. And I'm still constantly learning who that person is every single day, every moment of the day, and getting more and more comfortable with that person because I lost a lot of myself. And one of the funniest things was realizing that as a kid, I seemed to be like 100% fine. Like before I got into the world, before I listened to all the experiences and listened to everybody's advice about all this shit, as a kid, I seemed to have it all. Like I seemed to get it. I feel like The child part of my personality was like 100% fine. And I feel like as an adult, as I've been incorporating more of those things, those like unabashed things into myself, I felt more honestly myself than I think I've ever had in my entire life. Like I, as a kid, I was super sarcastic, not in a disrespectful way, but I was just, that was just my humor. And I lost that. I, you know... I used to always really want to make people laugh and make people smile, but I wasn't happy myself. And you can't really make people happy if you're not happy. So now my humor has become really sarcastic. And I always, I always laugh at that because I'm like, you know, when I was a kid, that's what I had. But I lost that now. And now that, that apparently had always been my humor. And now it's back. And another thing is I was, I was perfectly fine with telling you no. And if you didn't like it, I didn't, I mean, I'm sorry that you didn't like it, but I told you no for a reason. And that was just how I was as a kid. Now, it wasn't like I I told my parents no, or again, it wasn't like a disrespectful thing. But now, because of all the things that went on when I was younger and throughout my childhood up till this point, and even this point, um... People, a lot of the time, like to act, try to act like I'm not allowed to say no. Like, I'm not allowed to have an opinion about my life or my choices. That they're allowed to make those choices for me. And it doesn't really matter what I say. Because, because my opinion doesn't, doesn't count. And that's not the case. And it shouldn't be the case for you either. You have to be comfortable enough with yourself. especially. And if you're especially comfortable with yourself, you, you can say no. You can say, no, I don't accept this. No, I'm not agreeing to this. No, this is, this is, this is outside of what I believe is okay. And I have a boundary and you're crossing it. There's nothing wrong with that. 
and there's nothing wrong with being blunt about saying you need you need you need to back up like you're crossing my boundary and you need to get out of it there's nothing wrong with that so that is my positive thing for the day or for this week um you know our typical business subscribe to the podcast um send in your story if you have one i've gotten two stories including the one from chien and sf food and um I'm really excited to share them. They'll be shared a little later. I think there's like two episodes already planned before the sharing of the stories, but I'm very excited about them. But if you have a story, please send it in. And I'm actually really excited to like kind of have, I, I mean, it's not a backlog of shared stories, but I have more like the, more than one story. <laughs> so excited. Little, little things make me happy. So if you have it, send it into the podcast. Uh, you can email it at thehauntedright at gmail.com. Or send it in at thehauntedride.com. Um, and if you don't mind of leaving a review, that would be amazing. Um, not just for my podcast, but any podcast. Because I've started leaving reviews. I, I had wanted to get through all the podcasts that I had, but I was like, oh, this is going to be too much. I'll just start leaving a couple. And it was just so nice to know that I had done something nice for the podcast that I love as a listener. Um, and it, it, I have a better appreciation for it now I think too because I have a podcast so I know how important it is and and I want those people to know that I enjoy what they're doing because sometimes like you just need a little bit of validation for what you do so that's all I've got for you guys today and um 